everybody and welcome to this new episode of your weekly program Games and Names. Our sport today is equestrian and our guest is Nail Nassar. So if you want to know more about this sport, stay with us. You're insecure, don't know what for. You're turning heads when you walk through the door. Don't need makeup to cover up. Being the way that you are is enough. Everyone else in the room can see it. Everyone else but you. Baby, you light up my world like nobody else. The way that you flip your head. introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Nael Nassar. Uh, I'm 22 years old um, and I compete in the equestrian show jumping. How long have you been uh, playing equestrian? Um, it's been a good 12-13 years. I started when I was five years old and it got serious when I was 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. and, uh, why did you choose uh, this uh, sport? Uh, my parents kind of just put me in a bunch of random sports when I was younger um, and this one kind of stuck. Uh, it's really a wonderful sport with uh, interact with a live animal and you never really know what to expect, um, which adds a lot of intrigue, I think. Uh, can you tell us uh, or give us a brief idea about the types of uh, different types of equestrian that uh, we have? Of course. Um, there are a bunch of different equestrian disciplines. Um, the one that I'm specialized in is equestrian show jumping, um, where essentially they build a course of fences that you've never seen before. You have half an hour to walk um, on your feet, and then you jump it with the horse. The, whoever jumps it with the least amount of mistakes, and then the fastest time wins. Uh, so, uh, what exactly do you like in equestrian? Um, for one, it's very unpredictable, so you never know who is going to win um, because at the end of the day you're dealing with a live animal. Um, you never, like, they can make a mistake even if you don't make a mistake and sometimes you can make a mistake when they don't make a mistake. So um, it's really exciting in that you never really know what's going to happen and um, at the same time it's based on speed so uh, you get to go as fast as you can and really get to compete directly against other riders which is uh, uh, which is very interesting, I think. And as well, you're the only one in the ring, so everybody's only watching you for the 60 or 80 seconds that you're competing in. So those are a few reasons. Um, sure, um, there are several types, of course, but mainly it's whoever goes the fastest and has the least number of obstacles down, so the, they don't knock anything, is the person who wins the class. Uh, most of the time, there are actually two rounds, and uh, you jump the first round and if you're clear and you make no mistakes you go on to the second round which is over a shorter course and um, where time is more important um, so you can that kind of weeds out the the riders that are 
I guess not as good on that day. Um, they they're the only ones who get to go through to the second round. Okay, and do you have to finish within a specific time? Yes, there's a, there's a time allowed. If you exceed it, you get um, faults, obviously, uh, and it prevents you from moving on to the next round. So you do have to complete it in a certain time, and the time is set for each course depending on how long it is and um, how many fences are there. Is there any specific uh, breed for uh, the jumping uh, competitions or uh, just any, any type of horse? Um, there are of course several different breeds. Um, even within the same country you have different breeds. Like in Germany you have um, Holsteiner, Hanoverians, Westphalians, depending on the region in which the horse was bred. Um, so yes, you obviously won't find Arabian horses doing show jumping. There is. Um, a specific uh, way that the horses are bred to be able to compete at such levels, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me how and when uh, did uh, this uh, sport turn uh, from uh, a hobby to a more professional aspect? Um, it's a good question. Uh, the thing about a hobby is that you kind of do it for fun and for me especially over the last few years it has really turned into a sport mm -hmm. um, in that I ride to compete and I ride to win and not just to enjoy myself. So. Um, really in the last two years I had a lot more success than I could ever imagine when I first started jumping the highest levels and now that I graduated university um, I think it's I owe it to myself and to my horses to my family and staff that I try to do this full-time and see exactly how good um, I can get uh, when I actually dedicate all of my time to it mm -hmm. um, but really it's been over the last couple of years it really uh, it picked up and uh, I got to compete at really um, high-level international shows, mm -hmm. um, competing for a lot of prize money and representing my country. Um, so it really has been more of a professional thing for a couple of years now, and now I get to really dedicate my time to it since I finished school. Mm -hmm.
so uh, how did you start competing on the international level? Um, it began, I think, in high school. Um, I got to travel to the, uh, to the Emirates and um, to Qatar and Bahrain, where they have um, an Arab League co uh, tour, kind of, for the Arab riders. And so that was the first time I got to represent Egypt internationally. Um, my first real big event was at the Pan Arab Games, which is where um, I competed in my first championship for my country two years ago, mm -hmm. in 2011. Okay, tell me about the uh, most important uh, steps in your career uh, in the sport, uh, locally and internationally. Um, so it was, I think it began about two years ago, which is when I first acquired a horse to jump the Grand Prix level, which is the highest level in, in show jumping. Um, and I went to the Pan Arab Games in 2011 as part of the Egyptian team and we, we won a team bronze medal, alhamdulillah. Um, and that's kind of where my career kicked off. Um, the next year I went on to qualify for the World Cup final, which was held in Sweden. Um, and uh, I continued to compete at four star and five star international shows, uh, which is the highest level that you can compete at. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you choose the horse for training or for competition and how many horses did you uh, ride uh, during your career? Um, so I think the, the most important factor that I consider when I'm looking at a horse is his temperament and uh, how much energy he has. Um, I like horses that are always going and that you don't really have to kick and to get them going. Mm -hmm. um, but there are obviously several factors that you consider, like the horse's ability, how high he can jump, how careful he is, um, how quick he can turn. Um, there are a lot of factors that go into deciding um, which horse to purchase. Um, a riding career is obviously very long. Riders compete until age 50, 60. Um, so they go through hundreds of horses almost in their career. Mm -hmm. um, I've, gone, I've ridden approximately 10 or so. Okay, and those uh, qualities that you uh, spoke about uh, in a horse, are they, uh, are they able to change maybe by time, by training, or is it qualities that are in the horse? Of course, um, there's you look for the initial quality, um, and obviously the horse has time to develop um, over time. Um, a horse usually displays those qualities from a young age, which is why um, you purchase it in the first place. And then it's just a matter of fine tuning and teaching the horse to listen to you and um, be a lot more responsive to what you ask it for. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely a learning curve for horses and time for